Hi guys, this is Wade McMaster from designwebidentity.com. Uh, just giving you a quick run through of uh, the Bloom email pop-up plugin. Uh, this is available from Elegant Themes and you can see here there's quite a few templates and things we, that are available. But um, what we're going to do today is just basically go through and show you how to easily create a simple pop-up for your website. So uh, let's have a look at it. So uh, the first thing we have to do is I've just installed the plugin. I'm going to activate it and we're going to just start by, for one, we're going to import our mail list. So uh, I actually use MailChimp, so I'll show you how to quickly do that before we get uh, into the actual pop-up itself. So we're going to get email accounts, new account, and this is a test website, uh, just like a test list of created through MailChimp. If I go to my account and then go to API keys, You can see there we are our under keys here. We just simply create a key and we copy that key into our account section here. I'm actually not going to show this, it is displayed down the page after I created that key, and we're just going to pop it into here. So when I go to MailChimp, we are going to pop the account name, which is I'm not going to reveal here, and the API key just in here and uh, we're then going to authorize it and then we have our list so that's basically how we do it. I do not want to give away any personal information so we'll just come back to that in a second. Okay so now you notice I've uh, authorized my MailChimp account and I have a test list obviously zero subscribers because this is just a test list and we're basically ready to build the pop-up now so what we're going to do is we're going to go to opt-in forms you see here uh, new opt-in you get a few different options so obviously we're going to be looking at the pop-up for the sake of this, but uh, you actually also have the fly-in, which uh, which is a nice little form that simply pops up in the bottom right-hand corner, similar to the like pop-up in the center of the screen, only it pops up in the bottom right-hand corner. You do also have the option to move this to the center or the left and change your positions. You also have the ability to put an opt-in underneath a post somewhere in line on uh, your page. You also have the ability to create a locked content, so you have to actually have to be a subscriber to view content on certain pages and also just a simple widget that you can use so so far Bloom is looking like a bit of an all-in-one solution for inserting your opt-in anywhere on your website and it's just really easy and uh, straightforward so I'll start by clicking on pop-up and we're going to choose MailChimp and my test list I'm just going to call this my new opt-in but you can call this one whatever you want um, my test list. I'm going to go to next design your opt-in. So straight away you've got a series of templates here to choose from. So obviously there's different colors, different layouts and all of this can be changed more or less but it just shows you what you can start off with to make your life easy. Now like I said we can move things around but for now I really like to create something that has say an image on the left, description on the right and a little opt-in on these. So we're going to click on this one here with the, the dark background, scroll down, and customize. So before I get right into this, you'll notice that we have a whole range of customized options here to, you can really make this pop up your own. So we can sort of say, uh, download our free course as a, an opt-in title, and join our mail list, uh, see flash my team. And get immediate access to our free equal. So this is uh, assuming you have an opt-in gift or something like that, uh, which we'll explain how to set up at another time. But uh, it's very cool. You you can just sort of simply create a long message, short message, that sort of thing. If you wanted to, just for the sake of the video, I will actually uh, oops, copy and uh, paste this message again to create a little bit more filler. Now we have our image, this can be to the left of the text, to the right of the text, above, below, you've got all those options there. We are going to keep it to the left and then upload an image. This one here, which is one I've used on my Design Web Identity website, so set an opt-in image. And uh, we'll just, before we go any further, I'm just going to click this little button here. This little eye shape here is actually a preview. You see we've got our icon, subscribe button, and we've got our little bit of information here. So. We've already got a, an opt-in ready to go, but uh, let's have a further look at the customization. Of course, you do have the ability to have it slide up, fade in, flip. Um, so you do have a few options as to 
how you want it to enter the screen. We'll just preview that one there. Oh, actually, it doesn't preview the animation, so you may have to check on your main on one of your pages after you've done it. But you can go back and edit these settings. Um, obviously, you can choose to hide it on mobile, that sort of thing. So, background color. You'll notice that once again, we have a dark gray background color. For the sake of this video, let's say I want to make it even darker or a complete pitch black. Save that, and want to change the font to say different font later, text color, let's say dark text. Now this is going to look pretty horrible, but this is just for the sake of demonstration. Rounded corners. We're going to have a top border. I'm going to make that color something outstanding, so that way we know what to expect. Say yellow. So okay, we've got dark text and a dark background, which you should be able to see. A couple of different fonts, yellow border. Let's have a look. As you can see, we have the top border. We do have the rounded corners. We can't see the text because it's dark on dark. So uh, let's keep going from there. We're going to change that back to light text. And let's say we make that uh, that color more of an orange. I'm actually going to, so the code for that one is FF8800. I'm going to copy that code because I want that to be uh, recurring in what we're doing here. So we're actually going to keep the border there and uh, we're going to keep going. Now you do have these different border options you can choose from. So we choose that one there. I am going to stick. You see, we've got the nice little checkered sort of border across the top there. Probably not suitable for what we're doing, so we're going to stick with the solid border. Of course, now we do have a few other options here. We have the form on the right, the left, down the bottom. Let's put it on the right and do a preview. This is probably not going to look too good considering we have the image. But you can see you do have the ability to rearrange things, which is pretty cool. So we're going to keep that in the bottom for now. And uh, let's say we want to add a name field. You can add a single name field. Uh, email. Enter your name. Enter your email. Let's do this. Yeah, we now have these different fields here. So you see we've got a bit of a, a bit of a design form. We've got the orange, we've got the orange screen, but the button's not orange yet, so let's just scroll down and you'll see that we have form styling. So we can change any of the colors of the form we want. I want that button color to be the FF8800. So it matches up. And of course I want the background color. Let's say we want the background color a little bit lighter for some reason. We'll move that up. Once again, form text colors, dark text, because we have, I do believe, a dark background. Change that to light text. There you go. So now we have a bit more of a color coordinated sort of form. Not really happy with that gray, so maybe I will darken it back up again. But we have all these other little options like uh, the, the split between the two colors. We can choose like a little arrow. You see we now have an arrow there, um, as well as a few other options, just plain straight again, um, little sort of crosshatch curve, let's see what the curve looks like, so now we've got a little curve, so we'll just keep that like that for now, and um, you can also add a little bit of footer text, such as your privacy is important to us, your email address will not. I'll have the caps lock on, but it's all good. Success, success, you have successfully subscribed, happy with that. Let's preview this. And there you see we have a nice little footer message, so if you do want to put any sort of disclaimer or something on there, you can do that as well. So that is uh, the ins and outs of the basic layout. Uh, I can't really go too much further into the design without uh, basically customizing the CSS. So if you do know uh, CSS uh, styling, you can then take this whole form and um, you, know, you can start to change your background images, uh, further customize bits and pieces of the form. So that's more of an advanced web designer, web developer type feature, but uh, very cool, uh, good option to have up your sleeve if you do know what you're doing. So it is good that they give you the ability to do that. So we're going to move on to display settings next. Now you can see we do have a few different uh, options here. So obviously we can, once again, choose the animation. Uh, we also have the ability to, uh, to basically determine how or when, I should say, the pop-up 
shows up. So we can put a trigger after time delay, 20 seconds. This means the user lands on the page, 20 seconds later, they get their pop-up. Uh, let's say we want to go for a bit more of a user-friendly uh, approach that is more determined by their, their behavior. We want to try and make sure we capture interested readers and not just bug new readers the second they land on the page. So I'm going to turn that one off. Now we can trigger after inactivity, so if someone stops and reads for eight seconds, that pop-up will show up. Also, if they hit the bottom of the post, we can have it show up then too. We can also, if we decided to simply not wait until the, the bottom of the post, but try and hit them towards the bottom of the post, we can turn that one off. We can also have it trigger after they comment. Also, if they scroll down to, say, 75% of the posts, we can have it pop up then. So that's another cool little option we can have. That way we know they're interested, they're scrolling through, they're reading. If they've gone 75% of the way down, you know that they're obviously searching for something. So we can also put a few other options here, like trigger after purchasing, hide on mobile, that sort of thing. Now this display once per session is another option you can have. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to turn it on. I'll show you just quickly, but I will turn it back off. You can have it show up only once for a user, and that way if they do end up coming back and forth to your site, you can have it show up, say, once every five days, or once a day if you want one day, every three days. So that way they're not getting hit with this pop-up every single time they visit. So you don't want to drive visitors away. So this would be a good option to, to keep in mind. I'd probably put on every five days, because people are, or maybe every three days, because people are going to come back, say, a day or two later, um, you don't want to annoy them, but if they come back after three or four days, hit them up with a subscription form. So we're going to turn that off uh, just for the sake of video, so when I do finish all these options, we can go and have a look at how the pop-up works. Now you also have options as to where this pop-up actually shows up. So at this stage, you want it to go on everything, but we can choose for it to show up on the home page or turn everything on by clicking all of these and not having the home page turned on, but in this case, for the video, we're going to go with everything. However, you can choose simple pages. Like I said, there's a test site. There's not a lot of pages to choose from. But you can decide to have it not show up on the sample page. And um, let's say we're going to have a look at a post. Ninja Dude. We'll have it not show up on Ninja Dude, but show up on the test posts. So that way you can choose certain posts and pages you don't want it to show up on, which is really handy. So we're going to save that because we're now finished. And we now have our pop-up. Scroll up there, you'll notice we have the new opt-in. We also have certain statistics we can check out here. I'm not going to go into that now, but it does show you that you can see how many people are showing up, how many impressions it's getting, what kind of conversions it's showing up, that sort of thing. And you do have just a few nifty little options here. Um, that little, yeah. So you can really sort of measure and manage what you're doing. So uh, let's go onto the website now. We're going to go scroll down to Ninja Dude. And you'll notice we get no pop up whatsoever because we have disabled it on this page. So I'm going to go back to home. I'm going to go to Test Post 1. I'm sort of hitting these hopefully before the pop up shows up. Scroll down. And we have our pop up. So there you go. They enter their name, enter their email, or if you turn that off, just their email and they subscribe. So that's pretty much it. Like it takes what, five minutes to set this up. Uh, probably you would spend almost more time on the image than you would on the actual pop-up itself. So it's actually a really, really good uh, pop-up plugin. Of course, if you do sign up for the Elegant Themes pop-up plugin, what you're paying for their entire package, which includes this, is equal to the cost of some of these plugins by themselves. Uh, I actually end up paying about uh, 80 or 90 dollars. I can't remember what it was for. Pop-up domination not long before this came out and uh, I've actually paid 80 or 90 dollars I think it was for the entire package including all the themes, the Divi theme, all their plugins including the Bloom plugin. So this is just awesome just value for money and uh, a really easy program set up as you can see like it's just so simple. So if you'd like to know more info about the uh, Bloom plugin, just head to designwebidentity.com slash bloominfo. Or if you actually want to go ahead and download uh, the plugin, you can go to www.designwebidentity.com slash bloom. Uh, that is an, aff an affiliate link, which means I do make commission if you do purchase. But uh, this is awesome software and I'd recommend it to anyone. I wouldn't be going through all this trouble if I didn't think it was any good. So uh, if you get a chance, check it out. Also, don't forget to subscribe or... 
even just uh, check us out on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash designwebidentity. Um, also, subscribe to our newsletter on our website. Uh, thanks for watching. See ya.